nine to go in overtime. South Dakota State with its first lead since it was 24-23 at the 419 mark of the first half. One of these teams is going to the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history. Jimbo Lanieri has done a really good job out of timeouts tonight of drawing things up for his team to get at least the exact look he wanted. They are very, they were very offensively efficient. South Dakota State's cranked up the defense again. For much of the game, Western is up almost at 50%. They're down to 40 now, so you see he's got to draw up out of this time out. had possession and they lost it, but they don't. But the shot goes up right here. It does uh, not hit the rim. It is not secured by anybody on South Dakota State. Then you see real quick, the shot clock gets reset. So they're going to have to take that all the way back, I think, to that point. Jim Oliveri trying to take his third program to the NCAA tournament. Here's another one. Let's see if we can sit on the clock. The clock comes into the picture here. How much time would it? This is there. It's I can't really see it at the top of the screen. It's definitely in the teens. It was in the teens somewhere. It was around 2:12 or so in the game clock, and about 15 on the shot clock. Let's take a look. We're going to look here. Here we go. It says 2:20 right now. 1918. Behind the basket. Oh, behind the goal, there's 11 on the shot clock. But they don't have possession of it yet. He's got to keep rolling that. They would, they would keep rolling until they secure the ball. So it's 10. Should be 9 on the shot clock with 2.14 to play. That's, that's what I would suggest based on what we see there. And that's a heck of a difference because this is a Western team that doesn't like to quick shoot. They're going to have to inbound it. And the ball forward got 9 on the shot clock, I think. Terry Weimer, the crew chief, over there looking at the... Uh, Replay. Have a look again. 16. Is the miss? 215 with 11 on the shot clock. 214 with 10. It's 9 right now at 213. So it should be somewhere 9 or 10 at 213 or 14. I, I've got to think that's where it's got to be. I don't see how much you can move it anyway. Uh, secure possession there. Barowski and Simpson, the officials, thought they've done a great job here tonight. This has been a, been a clean game. Not a lot of whistles. Well, credit the players, too, because you know what this means to these guys. It's a one big lead, and this is the beauty and the agony of playing at this level. Take a look again. Yeah, there's a shot clock you can try and see right there. See, it says 11 right now. They don't have possession yet. You can't give them 11 seconds left until it secures it, right? There, he's got it. So 10, 2.14 and 10, 2.13 and 9, either way, I think it's about right. And, I, and I, listen, I respect these guys on the officiating crew. This is a pivotal, pivotal possession. You want to make sure you get it nailed exactly right. And they are taking a good, long look at this one. So where do you get into Western Illinois? Where do you have it? Where the game should be resumed. So well, let's see, the officials are going on what the interpretation could be. If you resume it where they got it, it would be actually a baseline out of bounds, I think. But let's see. Or they could say after the one was kicked back out to the top. That ruling has been made. Let's see. And they're going to give it to him on a side out of bounds. They're putting two on the shot clock. Oh, I don't understand that. Wow. With 2.06 to go, and now Jim Molinari wants an explanation. Well, that's got to be a rules interpretation that I'm quite candidly unfamiliar with. 
because when the game was, when it was called to their attention, that's when they finally noticed it. But it seems like you're punishing the Western players for going on the assumption that they had 35 on the clock. They're going by what the shot clock showed them. So I, I, if, if that's the rule, it's a pretty rule. And if it's not the rule, then they've made a mistake here because they secured that ball with nine seconds. I, really, that is a hard, yeah. bad, bad break for Western. Good Lord. Two seconds on the shot clock and the trigger in from the baseline. Well, Got to make something happen. What a great cut! A Megano! Got it! Goodness, what a cut by Megano! And Western leads by one. Let that be a lesson to everybody. Coach Walter had not pound on Sutt, just make the play. Walters, no! Rebound, Callahan. Tracks it down. New shot clock for the Jacks. Got him chasing if they keep it moving. A great recovery behind Weston gets so quickly realigned defensively. A move that can't stand the lookout. Keegan backs down. Parks now looking for help. Still on a time with shot clock. That's the goal. Got it. He's got 10. And South Dakota State leads by two. Let's go back to that inbounds play. Look at the great cut. What a terrific cut. Looked like the play was designed to make it look like he was going to use the double screen. And then he sold it beautifully. And then this is what you love. Games on the line. Go to your senior and make him do what he does best. Callahan, the best three-point shooter on the squad. Makes the most. He's taken the most. Nice water there. Griffin Callahan, his brother Garrett, played four years for the Jack Rabbits. A transfer from North Dakota. And he's had... 10 points here tonight, all in the second half and overtime. And the Jacks lead it by a deuce with 1-11 to go in OT. Now, they should get two for one. The weather next year, though. It's an NBA mindset, but they really should. Both teams at the free throw line. 17 fouls for Western, 6 for South Dakota State. Definitely get two for one, even if they take it all the way down mathematically. Shot clock at five. Not much happening here. Clark lost it. And it's a shot clock violation. SDSU has it. That's a, a small break for Western because now they should get their defense. They can communicate what they want to do here. Do they want to foul? Jim O'Leary, I think, indicated, no, they'll take their chances, they strike as their defense, get a stop, and you'll have 10 seconds or so to get a last shot. And it's about nine as far as the differential. Oh, this is really low on the dice, though, especially for a team that doesn't quick shoot very much. But he's playing in the strike, but all his defense trying to get one more stop. Walters with 14 points tonight, and the best player for SDSU has it. Walters with four on the shot clock. Lost it. Shot clock violation, South Dakota State. Okay, that's why Jim Mulberry's taking a couple of teams to the NCAA tournament. He knows his team. So we can get a stop if we need to. They're only going to stop. They get a shot clock violation. 9.8 seconds to go. Now, what are you thinking here if you're Jim Mulberry? Who do you want to take this shot? Well, I think he's going to have to play again. What are going to look I think this is exactly how much time he's going to I think he's going to do what he's done already. He's going to put it in Clark's hands. He's going to run Parks across. If he has time to post Parks up, he will. If not, he'll do the same thing he did in the end of regulation. And that's try and play to his senior, Clark, and let him create something. Keep an eye on Tyler, though. What a big game he's had as well. Tyler has 19 points, leading scorer in the game, the only double figure score on his team. Western Illinois is going to burn its final timeout. They did put a little more time on the clock, 10.4 to work with for Western Illinois. Terrific defense again. 
Turns the corner, here comes the help. Knock the ball loose, give Clark credit, the defensive player of the year in the conference. Terrific defensive stand, and they'll go shot clock violation. They've really done a good job on Walters, they've done a good job on everybody. The defense for the Weathernecks has been outstanding. Walters 5 for 22. Yeah. But six rebounds, four assists, and this is one of those things where, you know, you, you've got, you do have to keep in mind, if you're Jubal and Ari, you're on the road, hostile environment, how much do you want to roll the dice? Because if they come down, he's got a couple of guys, not yet that many, but he's got two that can shoot it. Jack Cowp has three threes, Ciola Clark has a pair, and he's a 46% three-point shooter. Maybe you say, hey, let's go try and take one shot and win this thing. It's been a great year for mid-major programs in college basketball. One of these mid-majors is going dancing for the first time in program history. Think about some of the good ones out there. Wichita State, great from the Missouri Valley. Murray State has been great all year. These two teams, perhaps 10 points four away from celebrating. I mean, what you can also do, obviously, is put it in the hands of Tyler to see if he can create it for himself. And then if they come to help, he can be the kick-out man to Clark or to Howe for a three. So there's a lot of options for Jim Mullen. We'll see which ones he utilizes here. Looks like Howe is going to be the trigger man. I'm telling you, they're going to put in Clark's hands. He's going to rinse it up the floor. Or Tyler's, and he's, and watch how trailing the play. I keep an eye on how coming from the back. Here it is, Tyler. Here comes Clark. Throws it up. No. Rebound. And South Dakota State has climbed to the summit for the first time. They're headed to the dance. takes the last shot. He had a great effort. 19 points, but misses the potential tying shot in overtime, and they storm the floor here at Sioux Falls Arena. South Dakota State is going to the NCAA tournament. Both the men and women from the summit. 52-50 the final. Coming up next, it's College Basketball Live. Of course, they're going to have plenty to talk about. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for Bob Belvano and her entire ESPN crew on Play Mapping. We say good night from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the home of the Jackrabbits.